Hi. Now what we've got here is an example on the coordinate geometry of the equation of a circle. And if you'd like to uh, give this a try, just pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll run through the work solution. Or if you're unsure on this kind of stuff and want um, more revision, just go on my website examsolutions.net and look at the tutorials for coordinate geometry of the equation of a circle. Okay, well, let's just see uh, if you did give this a go, how you might have got on. Well, first of all, you should be familiar with the equation of a circle, the form of it. It is x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals r squared. And if you can get your equation of your circle in this format, then the center is at x1, y1 and the radius is r. And so what we're going to do is take the equation of the circle here and get it into this form. And to do this, we'll just mark this then as part a. Let's just copy down the equation first of all. x squared plus y squared minus 20x minus 16y plus 139 equals 0. Now what I'm going to do, not that it's totally necessary, but I'm just going to bring the x term minus 20x to the x squared term. I'm also now going to just write the y term against the y squared term. So we've got that. It's up to you whether you keep the 139 here or take it to the other side. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to subtract 139 from both sides. You'll either do it now or later anyway in the question, so it doesn't really matter. But what we do next is we complete the square for these first two terms here, and we complete the square for these two terms here. And again, I'm assuming you're fairly familiar with completing the square. You can always check that out on my website, okay, if you're unsure. But on that assumption, what we have is a bracket, all squared, we write x here and we halve this number here, the coefficient of x. At the moment the coefficient of x is minus 20, so we halve that and we get minus 10. And what happens now is that if we were to expand this, we would get x squared, we would get minus 10x and another minus 10x, which would be minus 20x, but we would get minus 10 all squared, which is 100. So you get x squared minus 20x plus 100. And you can see that's nearly the same as this. But if I take away that 100, then that comes to x squared minus 20x. Now we go on to this pair, and we do much the same kind of thing. Complete the square, that is. We have a bracket, we put y, and then we do minus 8. We halve the minus 16. When you expand this, you're going to get y squared minus 8y minus another 8y, that's minus 16y, plus 64. We don't want that 64, so we subtract it. So this here would give me y squared minus 16y. And that equals minus 139. So if we clean this up, we've got x minus 10 then, all squared. We'll put plus y minus 8 all squared. And then here we've got minus 100 minus 64. So that's minus 164. And we add that to the other side. So we've got minus 139 plus 164. So what that means now is that we can just tidy this up to give us x minus 10 all squared plus y minus 8 all squared equals and minus 139 plus 164 gives us 25. So you can see that this is now in this format. And we can read off then for part A what the coordinates of the center of the circle C are going to be. So we can say that therefore the center is going to have coordinates 10 and 8 by looking at and comparing it with this format. So center 10, 8.
Well, that's part A, and part B is very easy from here because when it comes to the radius, the radius is going to be equal to the square root of 25. Remember, r squared is 25, so the radius r is going to be the square root of 25. We don't need plus or minus for this because a radius can't be a negative length. It's got to be a positive length, obviously, so that's going to be equal to 5. You could leave it as 5. You could even write 5 units if you want for the length, okay? But uh, there you go. There's your answer. Hope that uh, you've been able to follow that.